friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are gonna be doing some canning projects and some other projects around the house. So what we need to do first to get our canning project started is we are going to roast an entire turkey and four chickens. We did a pantry tour the other day and I realized I only have one pint jar of chicken on my pantry shelf and I only have one quart of chicken broth on my pantry shelf. That's unacceptable. I love having pre-cooked chicken ready to go for me and having it home canned is an awesome thing because I can control the ingredients. These are four chickens that I thought out that I purchased from a local farm through Azure. They're pasture raised chickens when they were on sale last year. I'm glad I bought them when I did because they were about $4 a pound, $4.50 a pound. And right now they're about $8 a pound or $9 a pound. So I had bought four cases of chicken and I put them in my freezer and now I need to start clearing out my freezer and we're gonna start putting them in jars. So that what I'm gonna do is I've got my big roaster pan out and I'm gonna take these chickens out of their packaging and stick them in this roaster pan. We're not only gonna get the chicken meat off these chickens and can that, but we're going to make broth as well. I've got some other fun canning projects I wanna to try to get to, and I wanna make for dinner a chicken pot pie out of this chicken, because if we're gonna cook chicken, we might as well get dinner out of it too. So I just kinda of lay these in here flat. I just washed my hands, and now we're gonna season them up with just some pepper. I'm not doing anything in particularly fancy here because I'm gonna use this chicken to make all different kind of dishes when I go to cook with it. And now we have some homemade seasoned salt we're gonna to add to each one of these chickens. I'm gonna add a quart of water to the bottom of this roaster. Plugged it in, put the lid on, and I'm turning it to 350 and we're gonna start this roaster at 350 and we're gonna let it go until the chicken is cooked all the way through. We're not only cooking four chickens, we are also going to cook and can an entire turkey and make broth out of the turkey as well. This turkey I got for free in my last butcher box order. I've been ordering through butcher box for the last almost two years now. I get the majority of my chicken and poultry through Butcher Box. The reason I fell in love with them is because they do grass-fed, grass-finished beef, 100% organic chicken, and humanely raised pork. So they always have different specials going on. I can link them down below. I don't generally get too much beef from them because you all know that I order my whole beef through local farmers, and I get most of my pork through local farmers, but I love what they stand for. And especially if you're new to grass-fed or grass-finished, there can be a little bit different of a flavor to it. So if you're interested in trying it before you go to a farmer and order a whole side of beef or half a beef or quarter of beef, it's a great way to try that. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the chicken. I'm gonna add some black pepper, some seasoned salt, I can link this seasoned salt recipe down below. It is a copycat Lowry seasoned salt. I'm gonna get the oven preheated to 350 degrees, I think. And I'm gonna go get some foil to top our turkey with. When it comes to this turkey, I'm not looking to make a beautiful Thanksgiving golden turkey. I just wanna get this really tender and juicy and delicious and cook through so that we can can it. I do want to put a piece of parchment paper over the turkey so my foil's not touching the turkey. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. It is starting to brown the chicken on the outside that where the chickens are touching the side. And it's starting to smell incredible in here. I'm gonna to try to seal this nice and tight with the foil. And I'm just gonna throw this in the oven And we're gonna let this cook until it's fall apart tender. Same with the chicken. And then we'll move on to the next step. In about an hour and a half and these chickens are all done. You can see that when I pull on the leg, the leg bone just comes right on out. 
So I'm gonna take these chickens out of the roaster pan and they are very, very, very hot. So I'm gonna let them cool in this bowl. And once they're cool, we will go ahead and we'll pull the meat off those bones. But I'm gonna get a few things put back into the roaster pan so we can make some broth. Here is some frozen carrot peels. I put some garlic in there, some onion peels, and then I'm just going through and pulling off any of the easy to pull apart bones. And we're gonna put those back in the roaster. The turkey took about two hours and you can see this is fall apart tender as well. So we're gonna get this out of the oven. So now that we have all the meat out of the roaster pan and oven, I'm gonna put everything in one bowl so that I can use this roaster pan as where I'm gonna put the meat that comes off the bones. Got our turkey here. And then there's all this really rich, beautiful broth in the bottom of this roaster pan that came off this turkey. So I'm not gonna waste this. Well, I just dropped the turkey neck on the ground. This is broth that just has beautiful flavor. So we're gonna pour this in here. When you're making broth or food or anything that's really savory, you want to try to maximize that savory flavor by getting all these brown bits. What these brown bits are, they are called glutamates, and it's when the, I think it's the carbohydrates caramelize under heat, they give you that umami and delicious flavor. That is what MSG is trying to mimic. MSG is monosodium glutamate, and it's what we as humans crave. It's that savory deliciousness. And instead of, you know, going out and buying MSG to add to your broth, which you could do if you wanted to, if you brown your meat or your bones or whatever it is you're cooking, you can get some glutamates naturally and you can get that really yummy savory flavor. So we're gonna pick off all the skin and bones and put it into the roaster to make broth. I was gonna make my broth in my roaster pan. I got all the chicken off all the carcasses. We're gonna can that tomorrow, but my roaster pan seems a little small for four chicken bones and a turkey bone. So I'm gonna pull out my 30 quart stock pot because I was gonna do it in two separate batches. I took my bag that had my scraps in it and I put some of the bones and skin in here. And I thought, you know what? If I'm gonna go through the effort, I only wanna go through it one time. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of this in here. I don't wanna go through two rounds of it. So let's see if I can do this without making it a huge mess. That's just all the broth that was made during the cooking process. And that stuff is extremely rich and delicious. It smells so good in here. We've had contractors fixing the doors today. And everyone that comes in is like, it smells so good in your house. Let me wipe my hands off. Now, some people like to season their stock later. I personally season it as I make it. So this is some black peppercorns, or black pepper, it is kind of crushed. We're gonna add in there, remember this is a 30 quart stock pot, so it's huge. So I'm probably gonna add three tablespoons, maybe a quarter cup of salt. Before I fill this completely up with water, I'm gonna put this on my stove or I'm not gonna be able to lift it. Now we have it on our stove. We're gonna fill this up with water. I'm also gonna add some of our garden fresh, freeze dried celery. Not too much. I don't like a ton of herbs in my stock. I mostly like it to be uh, chicken flavor forward. That way I can turn this stock into any sort of dish I want. Josh just that's, got home. That's a big pot. That's a 30 quart pot of broth. Wow. If I do it today, then I won't have to do it for a while. But I don't wanna fill it too full. I'm not gonna have this boil we're just gonna have it on a light simmer all night long. So I turned this stove on high because there's a lot of water in here and it's gonna take a while for this pot to get up to temperature. Whew. But as soon as it starts to boil, I'm gonna turn it down to a very light simmer and I'm just gonna let it simmer all night long. If we lose any water between now and when I go to bed, it's only five o'clock right now, then I will add a little bit more water to it because I wanna get the most bang for my buck. If I'm gonna go with the effort of making this, I want it, I wanna make a lot of it. 
and that's all she wrote. So this is what we got for the chicken. I'm not gonna can this today. I'm gonna can this tomorrow. I did separate the white and dark meat, but when I go to can it, I will put some of each the light and dark meat in the jar, but we need this broth in order to can it. So I'm gonna put that chicken in the fridge and when we can our broth, we're gonna can our chicken at the same time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this roaster clean. <laughs> That's the only thing I don't like about these roasters is I don't like washing this, but usually I put it off till the next day. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we will get our bowl clean, this put away, and we can call it a success for this evening. Good morning. We are going to go ahead and get this turkey and chicken canned up. We have the broth simmering all night long. I've got a very, very busy afternoon. I've got appointments, probably the second to last doctor's appointment, and just some computer and all sorts of things that I need to get done this afternoon. So we're gonna get in the kitchen early, get this stuff canned up, and I'm also gonna get dinner made. We're gonna make, I call it chicken and a biscuit. Basically it's chicken pot pie filling and then we're gonna put a biscuit topping on the top. But we're going to attempt to use our frozen biscuits that we made and we put in the freezer and see how well those bake up. I've tested those biscuits and they turn out really, really well, baking them from frozen. But I haven't tested them on this biscuit recipe. So we're going to give that a try today together. I just put a bunch more canning jars in the dishwasher. But these ones are nice and clean. So I'm going to get these out of here. We're going to can the turkey meat in pints. And then we're going to can the broth in mostly quarts and pints. Depending, I guess, on what I have clean in here. I have out both my electric pressure canner and my stove top one over there. We're gonna get some of this turkey meat pressure canning first so that that can be cooking while we go ahead and make dinner. Because the turkey meat takes 90 minutes and the broth only takes 20 minutes. So I wanna make sure that I have my appliances working for me instead of the other way around. I already have an outfit change. I just spilled broth all over me. It's okay though. So what we're gonna do first is we need to start straining our broth. So this has been going for about 20 hours or so. We are gonna be doing this in batches and we are going to need to skim off the fat. When you're canning, you want to try to remove as much of the fat as possible because it can inhibit the seal. So I'm gonna do this in a couple different steps here but it'll be really easy and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And we're gonna get this going so that we can have our two pressure canners working for us while we then make dinner. And we're gonna have dinner going first thing in the morning. We had four chicken carcasses in here and one turkey carcass. So I'm curious to see how much broth we're gonna get out of here. So there's a layer of fat on here and I'm going to transfer this into my fat separator. I probably could have just strained it directly into here, but I didn't want all the particulates in the way of straining. How a fat separator works is the spout, the hole is at the bottom and the fat stays at the top. So you can get the broth poured into your jar without getting the fat. And I like to put a little bit of broth in each one of my jars before I put the turkey meat to help reduce with air bubbles. So we just put maybe a quarter cup of broth in each jar. And then that's all the fat at the bottom and we're gonna save this and I'll show you what we're gonna do with this later. Here's our turkey meat. We have our dark meat and our light meat. I'm gonna put a little bit of dark meat and a little bit of light meat in each one of these jars. So I'm just gonna start stuffing the jars and I like to leave the pieces pretty big so that when I go to use them, I can decide what size I want the pieces to be in. And I'm going to pack them pretty firm but not stuff them. So I'm gonna fill them about halfway with white meat and then I will fill the rest with the dark meat. I 
have both turkey and chicken in here, I can use them interchangeably. So I didn't take the effort to separate the turkey meat from the chicken meat. I thought whatever I would use chicken for, I can use turkey. Josh and I both enjoy the flavor of turkey and chicken just the same. I can't remember, I think my electric pressure canner can hold 10 pints. So I'm gonna get 10 pints full and then we're gonna get the pressure canner going. But I only have two, four, six, seven here, so I need to get a few more filled. Now that we have some jars filled, we're gonna take our broth and we're gonna to top the jars, leaving an inch of head space. Adding the broth to the beginning just helps prevent the air bubbles. Now we take a paper towel and we wipe the rim. We wanna make sure there's nothing on the rim that will inhibit a good seal whether that's a little bit of the broth or chicken meat or a little grease. Now we top each jar with a new lid. These are my favorite lids. I can link them down below with a discount code if you are interested in them. I have not had one seal failure yet this year using these lids. And then we top it with a ring and that's how easy it is. This is so easy. And using my electric pressure canner, which I'm gonna show you how to use in just a second, makes it even easier. It takes all the thought out of canning whatsoever, especially pressure canning if you are intimidated by it. But there's no need to be intimidated even by a stove top canner, so I'm gonna show you how to use that too. And it is so easy. Because the chicken takes 90 minutes to process and the broth takes 20, I'm deciding to use the electric pressure canner for the turkey and chicken so that it's less time for me having to pay attention to it because the stove one, I do have to pay a little bit more attention to and 20 minutes is a lot less to pay attention to than 90. So in the canners, these go. There is one thing we need to do before we put those jars in the canner is we just need to fill this canner with a little bit of water. There's a line in here so it's easy to know how much water to put in. I can't remember if this fills, fits 10 or eight pints. Seven, it fits seven pints. Now we just put the lid on just like you would an instant pot. We're gonna close it, latch it. We're gonna have it on vent because we need to vent it for 10 minutes. We're gonna hit pressure can, put it on for 20 minutes. And now what it's gonna say is insert jars. We already did that. We're gonna hit start. It's gonna warm everything up. It's gonna vent for 10 minutes and then it's gonna pressure can. So now that is so easy. We have this going. I'm gonna just set this back just a little bit so we have more space to work on the stove to make dinner. One pressure canner going for us. Before I start pressure canning any broth, I want to divvy out how much turkey and chicken we need for tonight's dinner. Because I'm gonna be making pot pie filling, it doesn't take me any more work to make two. So we're gonna have one for dinner tonight and one's gonna go in the freezer. But I don't wanna get all this chicken and turkey in jars and then realize I don't have enough for dinner tonight and for one for the freezer. So I'm gonna pull out one casserole dish for the freezer and one for dinner tonight. I'm gonna just break up a little bit of both the dark meat and light meat into each one of these on the bottom. We got our turkey divvied up and I just realized I did not set the electric pressure canner for the correct time. I want to make sure that I do this to the T. When you're canning, it's not hard. But you do need to follow the directions. And I think I set that for 20 minutes, not 90 minutes. And I wanna just double check my times. The best canning tool when it comes to pressure canning is your manual that your electric pressure or your regular pressure canner comes with. So for my elevation, which we need 11 pounds of pressure, for pints, it's 75 minutes. So that pressure canner needs to go for 75 minutes. So I'm gonna turn this pressure canner off and we're gonna start it over. If we were pressure canning chicken with quarts, then it would be for 90 minutes. So we're gonna set this for 75 minutes on. And then for broth, which we're gonna be doing next, and I'm gonna be doing the broth in quarts, we need to do it for, for my elevation, we're gonna pressure can quartz for 25 minutes. This is why I'm double checking at 11 pounds of pressure. 
I'm gonna take the time to strain out all this broth into this really big bowl before we start canning up this broth. Now that we have our turkey separated into our two casserole dishes, our electric pressure canner going with some turkey and chicken in it, I want to get all of this broth separated and that will just be easier for me to then skim off all the fat on the top. The color on this broth is absolutely stunning. Part of that is because we roasted the chicken and the turkey, and part of it's because we used some of those onion peels, which helps richen the color of the broth. My main goal here is to separate this broth from my big pot into this stainless steel bowl. But at the same time, while I'm doing that, I'm also filling these quart jars to go into the pressure canner, and I'm using my fat separator. So while I'm straining the broth, I'm letting this sit for a few minutes so that the fat can rise to the top and then I can fill my jars. So I'm just trying to be as efficient as possible here. So we are gonna fill seven jars with this beautiful, beautiful broth. If there is a little bit of fat on the top, that's fine. You just wanna get the majority of it off. So now that I filled one more jar, I'm gonna take this broth that I already strained, I'm gonna put it into my fat separator. I'm gonna let the fat rise to the top while I continue then to strain more broth out of my big stock pot. Sometimes you get a little bit of a fat line on the spout, so I pour that out first before I then start filling my jar with my broth. I have one more broth jar to fill before I can fill this, but that broth is hot, so I wanna get some water in my pressure canner for the stove. While we finish filling the jars and cleaning the rims and putting the rings on, the water should be nice and warm for us. I don't wanna get this extremely hot, but I do wanna warm it up. I want it about the same temperature as my broth in the jars. So I'm gonna get this turned on kind of a medium. Awesome thing about doing a canning day like this is you can just kind of get into a rhythm and you can just start filling jars and seeing your hard work pay off. I typically like to work in batches with the amount of jars that fit into my canner. So my Presto pressure canner that is on the stovetop holds seven quarts. So that is what I am working with here and I will get them filled get the lids on, get the rings on, and get those ready to go into the canner before I pull out seven more jars. If you are interested in the electric pressure canner or my stovetop pressure canner, I can link them down below. I do have a full canning playlist as well that I could link down below if you're interested in more of kind of like a tutorial type videos where it's more of a step-by-step -step on how to can versus today we're just kind of hanging out in the kitchen and getting things done. Now that we have the Presto pressure canner with our broth canning or you know prepared on the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the jars with the rest of this turkey and chicken. When Josh and I first started, or when I first started, Josh and I were a little bit worried about would we even like canned turkey or canned meat. It's a little bit weird. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's delicious. It's convenient. And you can control the ingredients and you will really enjoy it if you try it. And I don't blame you if you think that it's a little bit weird at first because <laughs> Josh and I thought it was a little bit weird at first. I was running out of jars, so I took some time to wash up a few more jars so that I had enough jars to finish this canning project that we were working on today together. I'm getting the last few jars washed up that we need to finish the broth. I have almost all the broth strained out. Our pressure canner is now vented for 10 minutes. So all I have to do is close this vent and push can. And now it says 75 minutes and it's gonna count down and I don't need to pay attention to this at all. Our Presto pressure canner that is on the stove is venting. There is a stream of steam coming out here. I need to count down 10 minutes, and then after 10 minutes, I'll put my weight on, and then we will start the timer for the broth. So my goal is to get all the jars filled. We already have these jars here. These are the rest of the turkey. 
These are gonna go in there once that's done, get the broth filled in the jars, and then we'll make dinner. Now this is gonna come up to pressure, and once it gets to 11 pounds of pressure, then I will start the timer. You can probably hear the canner in the background, but when you get to the end of the broth, sometimes there can be little bits of things that you just wanna sift out so that you get a better quality broth. So I have one of these nut bags that I have laid over top of my strainer. You could use a paper towel if you wanted, but I find this to work really well. And I just put that over it. And I do this about two or three times where I'll go back and forth and strain out any of the really small particles. And that way I can get the best quality broth as possible. You can skip this step, but if I'm already gonna go through the effort of making a beautiful homemade broth, I want it to be pretty sitting on my pantry shelf. And let me bring you in and show you. I've already strained this two times and I'm still getting some of these little bits at the bottom. You can see that's what I'm straining out. And that would just end up in the bottom of your jar if you didn't strain it out. It's little bits of chicken and maybe pepper and minerals from the bones. And so I just like to have the best quality product as possible. So we take the time to do it. Perfect, so almost all of our broth is ready to go in the canner. My broth is up to pressure, so I just set the timer for it. Once I get to the bottom of my broth, I stop using the fat separator because toward the bottom there's not as much grease or fat, and I really don't worry about a little bit being in the jar. It's just those first quite a few jars that have the most amount. We did it. We have all of our broth jarred up and our turkey, this is all, and chicken, this is all ready to go into the canner. We have 40 minutes left on our electric pressure canner. I'm hoping this is gonna be done. I'll be able to refill this because this can go while I run to my appointment in town, but we'll see if we can get to that point. This canner only has seven minutes left. We are going to make our filling, our pot pie filling in this roaster that we had the turkey in. No need to clean or get another dirty dish or get a different dish dirty when we can use this one. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this chicken fat and turkey fat. It is going to be delicious. So let's get our filling made. I have two pint or quarts of broth here that I'm not going to can. I didn't put lids or anything on there because we we're going to use that to make our filling. I've got four onions. These are kind of smaller, so that's why I grabbed four. And then I'm gonna grab a peeler. To make our filling, we need onions, carrots, garlic. The other day, I peeled a bunch more garlic. I'm trying to make sure that we go through all that fresh garlic before it goes bad. Last year, with my garlic harvest, I had about 25% that I lost, and I'm gonna try to avoid that this year. One thing I don't need to chop is some celery. This is the Garden Fresh Celery. It's already chopped, frozen, ready to go for us. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just dice up these onions. And again, I'm gonna save these onion peels, put them back in the freezer, or put them in the freezer. And next time I make broth, I will have onion peels. The last time I made broth, a big batch like this was probably almost eight or nine months ago. I do big batches like this so that I don't have to do it all the time because it's a lot of work. And I would rather just get a bunch of it done at one time and then I have it on my pantry shelf. I normally reuse my broth bag, but I had to get rid of it last time. After a while, they do tend to need to be replaced. I'm gonna get this turned on. I'm gonna add a little bit of our chicken fat and turkey fat to this. Instead of using butter or olive oil, we can make our roux with this and no need for it to go to waste. That is our timer for our broth. So I'm gonna turn this broth off. It's right now at 15 pounds of pressure. For my elevation, it only needs to be at 11, but if it's over that, it's okay. It just can't drop under it. So what we're gonna do is turn this off. 
let it cool completely, it needs to come down to zero pounds of pressure, and then we can empty these jars and reload it. So this is heating up. So I'll go ahead and add my onions to it and my celery. And we're gonna let that cook. While that's cooking, I will chop up some garlic, probably about that much. Uh, maybe we'll chop up that much. And I'm gonna peel, wash, and dice some carrots. It smells so delicious in here right now. And this just feels like it's coming full circle. We just used all of our scraps and now we're filling it back up to make more scraps so that next time we make broth, we can go ahead and use this. I'm really excited to try these freezer biscuits and see how well they turn out on dinner tonight. Now we'll dice up our carrots. I'm gonna get a little salt in here and pepper to help draw out some of that moisture. I turned it down because the onions were starting to brown a little bit and I don't want them to brown, I just want them to soften. While our veggies are cooking, I'm gonna take our fat and put it into a mason jar. Chicken fat is called schmaltz and it makes the best roast potatoes. So I do not want to get rid of this. This is flavor, flavor, flavor. So we will roast potatoes with this at some point coming up here pretty soon. I'm just going to pop that in the fridge and it'll be ready for us when we're ready for it. Our veggies are nice and soft and tender. So I'm going to add our garlic. We're going to just saute the garlic for just a minute. And then we're gonna make our cream of chicken, basically. We're gonna make a roux, so we have the fat from the chicken in here. And we're gonna add some flour. This is gonna be our thickening agent. And we're gonna cook that until the flour raw flavors out, so about a minute or two. And dinner is almost done. Now I have to be careful because I'm using such a big pot that I can sometimes make too much and I only have two casserole dishes that we need to fill this filling with and there's already the turkey in the casserole dishes. So I just added one quart of our broth to this Oop. and we're gonna let this thicken up. I might need to add a little bit more broth but we're gonna see how this looks once the flour dissolves and it starts to thicken. And then I do have a little bit of cream out so we can add just a touch of cream just to add a little bit of creaminess to this. And if I ended up making too much filling, normally I would add peas to my chicken pot pie or chicken in a biscuit. But it's hard to sometimes gauge when I'm using such a big roaster pan to make the filling. So I won't put peas in it if I made too much. I do want to give this a little taste test just to see where the seasoning's at. Mmm. That is so good. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. And while that's thickening, we're also gonna add some of our homegrown parsley. And I don't have my homegrown parsley out on my counter, which I should because I haven't been using it very much. So we'll just put a couple pinches of that in there. I'm gonna add about a cup more of the broth, let that thicken. This I'll just put in the fridge and we'll use this at a different time. And then I'm gonna add probably about three fourths of a cup of cream. That'll add some richness and a little bit of sweetness. All right, it's bubbling away. I wanna give this one more taste test. It's nice and thick. Delicious, that's perfect. All right, we're gonna get this in our casserole dish. Let's see how well I did if I made too much filling or not enough filling. I'm gonna 
even looks like I'm going to have enough room to put some peas in here, which is great because peas are Josh and I's favorite. Well, I just ran to the freezer and I guess I don't have any peas, so there will be no peas in this chicken pot pie, which we'll live without it, no problem. I'm going to wrap this one up that's going in the freezer in two layers of foil. I'm going to mark on the top what it is and then I'm going to let it cool a little bit and we'll put it in the freezer for another day. And then I will show you how we are going to cook this up and we are going to use our frozen biscuits to finish off dinner tonight. But I am going to let this cool a little bit before I put it in the fridge because I don't want to put this warm sauce in the fridge and warm up my, my refrigerator. This pressure canner says it's at zero, but it's still pretty hot. I think I'm going to leave this lid on. I'm gonna let it cool quite a bit more before I try to open that and take anything out. This one is done too. I'm gonna to let this cool. I We got done so early in the day. I still have an hour before I need to leave for my appointment. So I'm gonna let this cool before, oh, that's hot. <laughs> before I leave, I will empty this and reload it. I probably won't do another round in this one until I get back because I don't want, I can't leave this pressure canning while I'm gone because I have to watch the gauge the whole time. This one, as soon as it hits temperature and it's starting to pressure can, I can leave it. It can count down the pressure canning and it can cool while I'm gone. So we'll be back and I'll show you once we have all this stuff canned up and I'll show you how to finish off dinner. I'm just kidding. I think I am able to empty this and get one more round of broth done before I have to go, which is awesome. So I'm going to let this cool for about five minutes with the lid off, just so that the outside temperature and this temperature can kind of get a little bit closer together. And then we'll empty this and we will reload it because I think in an hour and a half, I need to leave in an hour and a half, we can get this up to pressure have it pressure can, and when I leave, I can turn it off and let it cool while I'm gone. As long as we hit our 25 minutes pressure canning. While that's cooling, I will just unload the dishwasher. I didn't end up needing these pint jars that I washed earlier today, but I'm glad that they're clean so that when I go to use them next time, I can use them. I will put the lids back on like this so they stay nice and clean and I can use them whenever I need them and I don't have to worry about going through the effort of washing them. Now this water is way hot and the jars that I'm going to be putting in here have been sitting on the counter getting to room temperature. So I am going to empty about half this water and put cool water in here so I don't shock my jars when I put my jars back in this canner. I tried I tried so hard to run this one more time before I left I'm about eight minutes short I would be late to my appointment if I pushed it so I just turned this off I, it had already vented and everything but there was just no way I was gonna get it up to pressure and have a can in time to be able to turn it off and leave for my appointment my hips are sore so I've been wheeling around in my office chair back and forth because I've been doing computer work while I've been keeping a close eye on this. So I'm just gonna relax for the next, I got the dishwasher going, so I'm just gonna relax for the next 25 minutes. I hope I don't smell like turkey. That's the one thing when you have a bunch of stuff like this cooking, I am i don't like smelling like food. And normally I do these type of projects when I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> so I might be smelling like some turkey broth. Oh well. Tomorrow, I'm going to be hopefully, hopefully doing a big freezer cooking day. I'm pushing it down to the wire. I think I'm 39 and over a half weeks right now. And so 
I don't want to push it too hard today because I'm going to be in the kitchen all day tomorrow and I still need to put all the clothes. I washed all the baby's clothes and I got them organized but I have not put them in the dresser. We got the dresser and crib yesterday and I need to do that but I was thinking I would try to get all the kitchen stuff done during the week and then when Josh is home I could focus more on organizing the baby's room and clothes and packing my hospital bag. I can't empty this canner before we go and when I get back I'll fill this one. I just got home, it went really well, and I washed all my dishes. I now have both canners going and I was able to relax a little bit but the first thing I did was get these canners going and I got our dinner in the oven. I put it in the oven with a piece of foil on it at 400 degrees and it is boiling now. So let me show you what we're gonna do next to finish off, cr cross our fingers, hopefully this works, this chicken and a biscuit. And it looks like I turned the oven off, I'm not sure why I did that. I did just clean the stove because I'm getting ready for a huge, big batch freezer cooking day tomorrow. That's why I wanna get everything clean so that when I'm done canning, I can put everything away, I can get up early, and I can start some big batch bulk cooking. I was able to sit down and go through all the recipes we're gonna make tomorrow. We are going to top our chicken and a biscuit with these biscuits. Now our casserole is boiling. You wanna make sure before you put biscuits on that it's boiling so that the bottom gets cooked all the way through. I've never done this with frozen biscuits. I always do it with fresh. So this is a complete experiment to see if this works. I've cooked these biscuits from frozen and they cook up beautifully, but I've never tried to put it on the chicken and a biscuit recipe before. So I'm gonna close this and we're gonna cook it for at least 10 to 15 minutes. I'm so glad that I had dinner ready to go earlier today because when I left to run my errands, I was so tired. And when I got home, I was able to kind of relax, regroup, get everything going, get the canners going, regroup for tomorrow, and I didn't have to think about dinner at all. So I'm gonna put these back in the freezer, and we'll see what that looks like when it comes out. I'm gonna finish getting ready for tomorrow. I may have done a little sneak peek on this, and I think, oh yeah, it just may have worked out perfectly. So the best part about when you make chicken and a biscuit, that's what I call this, but it's basically chicken pot pie with biscuits on the top, is the top of the biscuit is nice and crunchy and the bottom of the biscuit is like a beautiful dumpling because it stays soft but it's cooked all the way through. I'm just going to open that up just to make sure it's cooked. It's perfect. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at those flakes. How convenient and easy is that? Next time I want to make this, all I have to do is pull out the base part because we made two of these today and I made 40 biscuits last time I made biscuits and I put those in the freezer so I'm not going to have to do anything to have this except for either take the time to let the base casserole thaw and then put it in the freezer and then put the biscuits on the top or put it in the freezer and or put it in the oven frozen and that takes about an hour and a half to two hours to thaw it and cook it before we put the biscuits on because it's super, super important that the filling mixture be boiling before you put the biscuits on the top. I'm gonna let this cool a little bit. Josh is on his way home. I asked him to pick up one thing for me for the big bulk cooking we're gonna be doing tomorrow. I needed red curry paste. My two canners are almost done. I have one more load that's gonna go in my electric pressure canner. I don't really have to watch that. So I'm gonna go change into comfy clothes. Josh is gonna get home and we're gonna eat this. I'm super excited. Thank you all for hanging out with me as we got a lot of things done. We did a little bit of experimenting. And if you are new around here, please consider subscribing because you don't wanna miss the next video of us cooking. I think we're doing like eight or 10 recipes. So that's gonna be fun. And if you enjoyed this video, I'll pop a couple other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.